Hey friends, welcome back to Thrive Nine Healing Podcast. This is episode 59. 59. And we're going to give you a break about talking hormones. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about the 50-50. Um, this is a concept that I learned from my coach, Brooke Castillo. And I just keep understanding it at a new level with every level that I, I described to one of my clients that like, she's like an onion and we just pull back layers and we pull back another layer. It's like, we're not solving the world in one day. And that's, it's kind of like coaching is really, it's just like layer upon layer. And, um, and recently I, is it, this was triggered by my cat getting hit by a car. Mm. And then a week later here in Oklahoma, we had a hell storm and my yard got flooded. So I, it triggered this very, Self pity, mm-hmm. right? That I stayed in, um, yeah, until yesterday. So. What's well, this idea, right? Well, this idea of people think uh, we've been taught, right? When it rains, it pours, and so all of a sudden, it's like, well, one thing bad happened. Well, yeah, we well, expect, or people will think, oh, I'm just waiting for that other shoe to drop. Right? right? You're like anticipating more bad stuff, right? Um, to happen, right? Yeah. And growing up in like a evangelical background, right? Uh, it's, there's this like kind of unspoken, maybe it was spoken, um, idea that if you're good, God will reward you. And if you're bad, God will punish you. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. I mean, that was my experience. I can talk yeah. about my experience. And even though I have left organized religion, like that, it, that belief system really dies hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, because we're taught that as, as kids growing up, right. And it's that, uh, what's right, what's wrong. And then when you have that added weight of religion added to it, it's like, oh no, yeah, you are not just making the right and wrong decisions, but you make right decisions. Of course. Yeah. You'll, you'll be, you're expected to get rewarded. Right. So then we have this idea of, gosh, if something bad happens to me, I'm getting punished for some reason. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people have this belief system. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think you also see it in other cultures. Yes. I've done a lot of um, medical missions in Mexico and it comes along with that, that maybe that religious guilt, mm-hmm. right. Is that uh, a lot of their belief system comes from if they're sick, they did something wrong. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And, um, and then we have this, so I'm the one, I'm like the older of the oldest millennials, right? And so our generation is known for being entitled and I'm also the oldest and I have this system that like from childhood, I believe system that if I do X, Y, Z, then I deserve and I'm entitled to these results. Right. Right. Yeah. Like if when you graduate high school, mm-hmm. you get a, high, a graduation gift. Right. Right. Because you did X, Y, Z, you get this. <laughs> yeah. Right. You accomplished it. Yes. Yeah, so you get a reward. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that belief system plus this, if I'm good, God will reward me. If I'm not, then God is going to punish me. Right. Really has created a paradigm of how I look at the world when good things happen and when bad things happen. So when good things happen, I think I deserve it and I'm entitled to it because I put the work in, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. When bad things happen, I go to self-pity and think this isn't fair, Mm -hmm. right? Like I've been doing everything right. Why is this happening? This is not how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We kind of, we we fall into that trap based Mm -hmm. on, yeah, our belief systems, um, and the trick is, is cause then you start to fall into, well, then why is this happening to me? Mm-hmm. Right. We're hearing that vin- victim yeah. mentality start to emerge its head a yep. little bit. Yep. Yeah. And, and I think that this is also with people that are very like health conscious, mm-hmm. right. I E S crossfitter. <laughs> We're like, look, I go to the gym, I eat healthy, I drink the water, right? And then we feel very entitled to live a very long, healthy, active life because in our mind, I put in the work. Mm -hmm. And when you get sick or ill, it's like you feel betrayed 
by your body and you feel betrayed by God, the universe. Like, I don't understand. I did the work. Right. <laughs> Uh, and fortunately it's not that black and white right <laughs> so even though our belief system has created that um framework or that lens which we look at the world in um or through to see the world uh it's it's not black and white yeah. it's not yeah <laughs> um that clear uh xyz will lead to yeah um the next yeah, the next thing, the next reward. Yes. And honestly, that that clear path that you're talking about mm -hmm. feels very soothing to our brain. Mm -hmm. It is. Well, it's that, that linear, right? Like our brain is always trying to kind of um, be efficient, right? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, if I can get from point A to point B, that's in a straight line, that's the most efficient way to get there. Yeah. And um, that's what our brain tries to do for us. Um, but then life happens and very rarely is it a straight line. Right. Very rare is it that linear um, direction. And, you know, we talk about, well, um, linear thinking, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it is, it's part of that belief system, part of that thought process that, oh no, yeah, um, I should be able to get from point A to point B. Like I can see point B. I should be able to get there the most direct route. Um, but that's really uh, an unrealistic expectation for us, I think. Right. It, I mean, intellectually, I can agree with the words that you're <laughs> saying, right? But uh, my brain, and I'm sure a lot of people, someone to argue, like, no, like, that's the most efficient way. Like, I'm going to take that way. Yes, yeah. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um. I think the trouble lies when we have that expectation and then when they get from point A and they cannot easily get to point B, it's kind of, um, we're taken back, right? Because yeah. we were like, why, why, right? Yeah. Like, why is this happening? Why am I not able to get to point B as efficiently, as easily um, as I want to, or as other people are able to get from point A to point B? Um, and so it's that expectations, I think makes it, um, even more challenging. <laughs> it just makes you suffer more. Yeah. Yes. So I, I, um, the 50, 50 concept for you guys that haven't heard in past episodes, uh, Brooke says, and I agree with her that life, the human experience is 50% positive and 50% negative or shitty or whatever you want to label it. Right. <laughs> um, and that it was designed that way. Right. Okay. So I agreed with that and my brain tied this caveat that I didn't realize that it did. Yeah. That it's 50, 50 based on my behaviors. Uh, yes. Yeah. Right. Um, that I can make it 50% good by my behaviors and by my other behaviors, I can make it 50% bad. So the 50-50 right. still falls back on my shoulders. Right, I see. And then the rub came with things that I can't control, like my cat getting hit by a car or hailing. The weather, yeah. Yes. We don't have any control over that. Yeah. And so my brain took it to basically feeling sorry for myself I, my behaviors didn't cause this. Why are these bad things happening? Happening? Why is the universe being mean to me? Right. Right. Which is just a self pity cycle. Mm -hmm. And then I was meditating and I, I took that for some reason, my brain let go of that caveat and realized, no, the world is 50, it's, 50, regardless right. of the humans, right. Regardless right. of our behaviors, regardless of our beliefs, that is the human experience, no matter how perfectly we live or yeah. how imperfectly we live. Right. All of us are going to experience our life as 50-50. Exactly. Yeah. And you can look at your life back on your childhood. And that's what I think this is how my brain got to it. As I was looking back on my life, because I was feeling sorry for myself. Right. I went and audited this 5,000 square foot home yesterday. And that added on to the... I've made terrible life decisions, my profession. Why didn't I marry a rich man? Right. right? Okay. Okay. So you can see how bad it was. 
And as I was meditating and I look back on my life and I was, I had that lens of like all these poor decisions, how, how terrible I've made my life. My brain offered up like some of these really good memories, like hiking in Colorado and the opportunity to live other places. And it shifted. It was like, I actually had a really good life (laughs) and because I've had 50% 50% positive <laughs> things. I've only been focused on the 50% negative. And a life includes both, both. and it can still be a good life, right. including the 50% negative. Right. Yeah. Um, I think I think it's really important to recognize that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because it's very easy to fall into that, you know, oh gosh, bad things are happening um, around me or to me, you know, like, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and we, we don't have control of the world around us, right? right? We have control of this human being, Mm -hmm. right? That's all we really have control over. Um, and so, um, I think, you know, you brought up a really good point is that when we take time because, okay, hold on. I had two thoughts at the same time. Um, those things are happening around us, right? We've talked about those things are neutral. It's yes. how we how we interpret them. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, so the the weather, the tornadoes, the hailstorms, right? Um, the even man the, having the five thousand square foot yeah, house. Yeah. All neutral. All neutral. It's how we interpret that. Um, so uh, those positive things and those negative things that inner are that happen around us in our life in you know um it's how we interpret you know those as being positive or negative um uh, yeah. it's the meaning in the stories that we put on them exactly and the meaning in the stories we put on about ourselves and our external environment right exactly yeah 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 um i think by by knowing this 50 50 rule um Uh, gives us the opportunity to kind of get out of that loop, right? Kind of gives us permission to say, okay, you know what? Um, These are neutral occurrences that happen and it's um, my interpretation and how I choose to to view those things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so either they're contributing to our positive um, response or our um, positive, yeah, feelings and response or they're contributing to the negative, right? But we get to choose that. Yeah, Yeah. and like we get to choose our story around our lives because I think if we don't believe that our life, if we don't have a perfect life, Mm -hmm. which no human does, (laughs) um, then we think we've had a bad life. Mm-hmm. Or if we've experienced trauma in our life, then yeah. we've had a bad life. Right. We've had a bad childhood because we experienced trauma. Right. Yeah. When the reality is, is that you've experienced 50, 50. Right. Yeah. Um, I think the, yes, uh, the, the trick is, is that oftentimes when um, just like, you know, you start, you said that you started to get into this self pity mm-hmm. cycle um, is that, uh it's very easy for us as humans to go there. I think, especially if they've had challenges, if they've had traumas, um, it's very easy to get into that cycle of gosh, everything feels bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you get in that self-pity, that unworthiness, um, cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so being able to break that. Yeah. Or letting, you know, people know that there's, there's, there's options, there's different perspectives, right? Mm -hmm. It's not all our fault. I mean, we do have control over what we add to the situation, right? Right. Whether it makes it that situation better or worse, but um, if it's things, yeah, that are happening around us or feels like things that are happening to us, we still have control, right? Right. We still have an opportunity to, to change that outcome. And I think in our society, we have a, It's very disempowering, I think, for Mm. trauma victims. Um, A, that wording right there. It can be a trigger. Yes. Right? For people that have experienced trauma, i.e. all humans. Yeah. Some form or fashion. Right? Yes. But we don't acknowledge that trauma is on a spectrum. Oh. Mm -hmm. All humans experience trauma, right? Because all humans experience the 50% negative of life. Trauma looks different 
-hmm. on a spectrum, right? Yes. But it doesn't have to be a life sentence, right? Like exactly. I can hear the people, I can hear the critics like, well, whatever. Like if we go into the white privilege, this kid that's like from New York city and it grew up a millionaire, like his trauma doesn't compare to me growing up in poverty, you know, in like an incest situation, right? Okay. Yes. No, it doesn't compare, but trauma is trauma, right? Pain, suffering is pain and suffering. Right. Um, and you see people like, I don't know if you guys have ever read Todd Herman. He wrote the book, The Alter Ego Effect. And he's a very successful coach. He's a high performance. Like he, he coaches Olympians. Okay. okay? Um, the book's phenomenal. <laughs> but he came out recently and said that when he went to church camp, when he was 12, two of the male camp counselors raped him. Okay. Right. Like trauma mm -hmm. but yet yes. the man continued on with his life and built a very beautiful life for himself like when we get stuck and identify as a trauma victim mm -hmm. and that trauma shouldn't happen to us as humans that is very disempowering yes yeah um it's as if uh, I, I think when you when people identify um and come from that victim mentality it doesn't feel like 50, 50 anymore. It no. feels like, oh gosh, it's hundred percent. It's bad all yeah. the time. Right. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I'm in this hole that I can't get out of. Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, knowing that and even, yeah, seeing people who go through challenging um, and admit their traumatic events or yeah, um, the trauma they've gone through and see and seeing, you know, how they've, um, either use that or um, how they've changed their perspective, right? To still be successful in whatever form of success right. is for folks, um, I think is really important to see and to kind of normalize, right? Yeah, because the more that we, the, because trauma in itself is stigmatizing, right? Yes. And so the yes. more that we, we talk about it, we kind of normalize it. Um, I think it's, 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 it's helpful for people overall for sort of, yeah, for all of the humans, because you're exactly right. Like what may be, because it's our perception, right. And our belief system, what may be traumatic for me may not be traumatic for the next person, right. right. Or traumatic for you. And so, um, having, you know, that, uh, that, or knowing that spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. And having a better understanding of that spectrum, um, but also knowing that that doesn't have to define us. Right. Yeah. And we should not, I, I'm not gonna say we just, how do I say it? Because I've been there and I, because I have been that person that identified as someone that experienced trauma and I almost wore it as a badge because mm -hmm. it allowed me to make lots of excuses in my life. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. Um, you get into this like competition of like who has the worst trauma therefore who is entitled to the most excuses right yes. like I'm not minimizing it do if you if I get a nasty email be ready yeah. because I am not minimizing it trauma does feel terrible yes and it yeah. does impact us and it does have a lasting effect on our lives mm -hmm. but when we start identifying it and using it as a place to not live our lives right and stay stuck like those are just choices right yes yeah um i i think that you bring up a really good point because um it when you identify or use a label you know um of trauma it opens up the opportunity for and part of this is people's um maybe understanding or expectations of trauma right um or maybe understanding of it, um, but it does open up that door to create excuses in our life. Yeah. Um, and I, I, again, I mean, it, it, it uh, comes down to those choices, right? Like what you um, choose to do with that information, that understanding and that learning um, and going through that journey, you know, of the trauma in whatever form or fashion. Um, and being able, yeah, um, to understand, right, 
how that traumatic event or situation has shaped us in our belief system, Mm -hmm. but doesn't control us. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that, and moving away from this expectation that humans shouldn't experience trauma. Oh, yes. It's 50, 50. It is. It's across going to experience it. The board. And I know that that is a challenging thing for folks. I mean, one, we don't like to feel bad, right? but two, I mean, you see it from, um, from parents, right. Who want to protect their kids. They don't want their kids to feel hurt. They don't want their kids to feel bad. Right. So they do the best they can. Um, I'm having this trouble as a people pleaser. I'm trying to, um, I, I want people to have a good experience, right? Um, with my, at my upcoming wedding. And I want people to, in, you know, enjoy it. Well, I don't have control over what their right. experiences are, but I really want them, you know, to have a good time and to enjoy it with us. And I'm, um, yeah, coming to that realization that that's uh, um, an unrealistic expectation. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's so saturated, I think, in the world. Yeah. The thought process is that humans shouldn't suffer, humans shouldn't experience trauma, mm-hmm. and we should be happy all the time. Right. And because we have those three expectations, we are so miserable. We are. It creates the suffering in our lives. Um, some, I, I know this, and somebody reminded me this the other day. They said, okay, so when do we learn the most in our lives yeah, right. <laughs> when do we learn the most it's when we're challenged it's when yeah things get hard we get tested that's when we grow as a person mm-hmm. right we grow as a family when things get hard and things mm-hmm. get tough um so I, I think it just underlines right those expectations are completely unrealistic mm-hmm. but um uh, yeah, we don't want to hurt. We don't want to suffer. Um, but that's, if we think of it, you know, as, oh, well, those challenges are, are inevitable in our life. Yes. Um, but that's our opportunity to grow, to be pushed, to, yeah, see what happens. Yeah. Um, how we overcome and come through situations. Yeah. It's the contrast. And Burke talks about that. Like yeah. if we, if we felt happiness from the moment we were born, mm-hmm. right our whole life, yeah. we wouldn't know that was happiness. Right, 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 yeah. We had to experience disappointment to know what happiness felt like. Yeah. Right, and so my brain used to argue with that, but we usually don't know what contentment feels like until we're unrested. Like, what, what's the opposite of contentment? Um, let's see, to be... Oh, that's unsatisfied. unsatisfied. Yeah. I was yeah. gonna say, um, yeah, to be, yeah. So, cause contentment probably is like normal, like homeostasis for us, but yeah. we don't realize that we're not content until we're unsatisfied. Right. And then we're searching for that contentment. We're like, oh, I want to be back there. <laughs> yes. Right. And so we need that contrast, mm-hmm. um, to be able to experience all the emotions that we came preloaded with. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I mean, our emotions are a are, are spectrum as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if you don't see one side, right, or you don't experience one end of the spectrum, it, it's much harder to appreciate right. the other end of the spectrum. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Um, huh. Yeah. I like Byron Katie's quote. I think I've quoted her before. And she says, um, you only lose, but 100% of the time when you argue with reality. All right. Say that again. So you, you only lose, but 100% of the time when you argue with reality. Ah, okay. I like that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. When we argue with reality that life is going to be, regardless of your actions, regardless of your physical health, your mental health, your financial status, your socioeconomic status, your sexual identification. Yeah. Did I cover your age? <laughs> did I cover it all? Yeah. Regardless of all of that, your life is going to be 50 50. Right. And when we argue with that, we lose 100% of the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I want to caveat it 
your life at the 50 50 is still a good life ah yes yeah yeah it is i think that the more people realize and see you know that um our life is 50 50 then uh, sometimes that can kind of lessen that um burden if you will when things are bad yeah right that you don't get stuck in that on the oh gosh it feels like a hundred percent of the time is bad it's right. like well if I know you know going into it all right I'm gonna have bad experiences and I'm gonna have positive mm-hmm. you know or good experiences negative experiences and positive experiences um that can help um I think that spectrum right like of how we understand things um and how we understand our feelings in response to those right. positive and negative events, yeah, yeah, or situations. And I don't think it's a, about understanding this and then just when the negative happens in your life, being like, oh, it's just part of the negative going on, oh. right? Like, I'm still going to have my little self-pity parties, Yeah. right? Yeah. Like, if my cat gets hit by a car again, like, I'm probably still going to feel sorry for myself. My brain's going to want to make meaning out of it. Right. But what's beautiful is the awareness now and being able to reboot and say, this is the 50, 50, right? Right. Yeah. And I move more quickly out of victim mentality, out of self-pity mentality and back into this, you know, all things are neutral, right? Life is still good. Yes. This is just part of it. And, um, I was listening when I was feeling sorry for myself to one of Brooke's, Brooke's podcast about self-pity. Ah, okay. And I want to share this example. I stole it from her, so I'm going to give Brooke full credit <laughs> for it. And I loved it, especially because you're a um, Ivy League graduate, True. right? Okay. So Brooke was like, pretend that you are applying to go to Yale, mm-hmm. okay? And we all expect Yale to be challenging. Yes. Right. We all do. It's an Ivy League school. We expect it to be hard, right? Right. And if I have a a brain surgeon, right, Mm -hmm. and he went to Yale, I want him to be like, Yale was really challenging, right? I don't want him to be like, so easy, right? no challenges. So when he gets inside my brain and it doesn't look like how he knows it to be, if he's never experienced hard, he's going to be like, well, I don't know what to do. Oh yeah. I don't know what to do, but if he's learned how to deal with hard things, right. Like he'd be like, okay, I haven't seen this before. I'm going to figure it out. Right. Right. So we want yell to be hard. Right. Right. I understand that. So it's as if we're going to yell and then I'm like, this is so hard. The professors are unfair. This should be easier. I this, you know, like, I don't know why this is hard. It does not have to be this hard. Yeah. That's what we're doing with life. Okay. Right. Instead of saying like, it's hard, it's hard, but I'll figure it out. Let's go. It's go time. Right. Right. And so then she took that analogy and she's like, life is yell. (laughs) Right. Yeah. We get to take some fun PE classes. Right. And we're going to take some hard classes. Right. And instead of being like, oh, it's so hard for me, like I was be like, all right, it's hard. This is a hard course in my, in my cat, in my course schedule of classes in my life. This is one that's a little bit harder. It's go time. I'll figure it out. Right. So if we look at life as a curriculum, Mm -hmm. it's part of Yale's curriculum. My life is part of my creator, the universe said, all right, here's your curriculum from Yale. Yeah. You're going to have some easy classes and you're going to have some hard ones. Yeah. I like that metaphor. I do too. Yeah, I, I really like that though. metaphor because um, I, I I think that um, I think that's true, right? Is that you know um, when we have tough classes, right? When we are charged with challenges in our life, I, like yeah, we've been saying it's an opportunity to to work through it, to push it, figure it out, yeah. right? Um, I think that some of the um, successful CEOs or business owners, you know, that we hear about um, have learned how to be creative, to grow and to push through. It's like, okay, here's a challenge that 
I haven't seen before. Here's a challenge, you know, that um, I don't know how to get through, but you figure it out. You, right. Yeah. Um, it's part of that growth mindset of um, no challenge is too big. Right. right? Yeah. I right. mean, the, 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 yeah, life, the universe, the world, you know, things change on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but you f- find a way through it. It's an opportunity, I guess, to find a way through it. Yes. If you will. Yeah. Like I totally appreciate the fact that you did not take basketball for beginners 101 and swimming as your entire curriculum for med school. Yeah. Right. Right. As my <laughs> physician, I appreciate that you had to take harder class and learn how to problem solve, learn how to go find answers that you don't know the questions for, or you don't know the answers for. Right. Right. Yeah. I appreciate that as my physician. And I'm sure people yeah. appreciate the fact that as their coach, that I am not a person that's like only learned my Just, coaching philosophy from the classroom. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. That I have been, I have lived life, man. <laughs> I have lived a 50 50. Yeah. <laughs> to the extreme on some things. But that makes me a better coach. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Like I yeah. can speak about depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts. I can speak about divorce, domestic violence. I can yeah. speak about feeling sorry for yourself all the time. Right. And self-sabotage. Right. Yeah. Because I experienced the 50-50. <laughs> yeah. Well, it creates this unique experience. Right. Yeah. That you can speak to. Um, but it also uh, helps people gain a perspective, right, on different ways to problem solve, if you will, right, or different ways to experience the whole spectrum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I think that is a very worthy (laughs) um, experiences and our um, within our life, right, Mm -hmm. that creates who we are, but um, helps us be uh, better practitioners to serve, right, yeah. folks, is because we've got those unique experiences. We've been through um, the tough stuff, right? We know where to find the resources. And um, I think when sometimes when we, you know, share things on our podcast, and sometimes I always kind of like, I don't know if I want to share that. And game will be like, well, that helps people relate, right, right. to things more. Because if you, if I've experienced something, I'm, I, yeah have been reassured and guaranteed that I'm not the only one. No. Yeah. I mean, there's 7 billion people in the world. So at least hundreds of thousands of them have experienced the same thing you have. Exactly. And so when we're, you know, um, sharing information like, Hey, we've experienced the 50 50 um, by shedding some light on it and normalizing it and talking more about it. Mm -hmm. um, Hopefully that makes it easier for folks to also share their experience, right? Right. Or um, to get another perspective or get some support to help them through their experience. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's 50, 50, my friend. 50, 50. And you have a good life still. Right. And that was the new thought I got this week is like, oh, my life has been 50, 50. And I still had a good life. I don't have to, I don't have to have a only good life Mm -hmm. and no, none of the negative to have a good life. I get to have a good life that blankets all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So, all right, friends have a great week. We'll catch you next time.